Hey there, today we will be extending our grid setup that we have prepared in the grid fundamentals tutorial. If you haven't watched it yet, you should watch it because it is based on that tutorial. And we'll be extending it with a temperature driven smoke simulation. Let's first build up our smoke simulation as we did in the previous tutorial. So I won't comment a lot on this one. And if you need the details, please check out the previous tutorial, Grits Fundamentals. All right, so let's just create it. I need a dynamics node for the smoke simulation. Also, I need, of course, in the Grits submenu operators, the advection node to transport our fluid dynamics. And it's already in the right pipeline stage. I just need to assign uh, our velocity channel, which is encoded in the gauges dynamics node, as we already know from our previous tutorials, just using a better integrator here for better quality. All right. So next thing is we need a smoke channel, which I create by creating a scalar channel. So taking floating point values for our smoke density. Here I click on this create advection button. We have a second advection node here already filled with all the stuff we need. I change it to channels advection because it is a channel and that's about it. Next thing we need is an emitter also in the grids, grid sub menu. So always find the according tools for channels in the grid sub menu. I choose a grid emitter because we want to emit into a grid. Here I click on the standard setup, creating our channel settings and our grid emission settings here already filled except for the channel, which I choose is scalar. That's the target channel I want to emit into. And uh, here I could actually leave it like this, but uh, what is missing for now is our volume here. So our emitter knows where to put our smoke. So I create a new volume, double click it, create a shape for it. Let's just stick with the sphere. Well, let's maybe scale it down a little. And we can see that the fluid domain is not fit in yet. So I go into gauges, dynamics, parameters, and choosing a new origin, which is at the minimum. I put it into center and now we can see that our volume is inside. If I hide that shape, we can see that smoke density has been emitted. If we play it now, of course, still nothing happens because we still need a force that is driving the smoke away or into a certain direction, for example. So let's go into the gauges dynamics node into the dynamics tab and we have the grid forces here that should be included clicking the candidate button and creating an external force double clicking it to go there into the settings and i want the external force so the wind force if you want to put it like this uh, along the x direction so i set the manual direction to one zero zero the strength i put let's say to 50 and maybe i rearrange the source at this side down here like this. And if I play it now, you can see that uh, the wind is pushing the smoke to the side along the X direction. But of course, you also only want the wind to be emitted in the shape area. So again, as we did before in the previous tutorial, go into the volume, click CS volume, creating a new volume constraint which we can now use in our force like that. And now the force will only have influence or act inside this shape volume. That's our base setup. And we will now be extending it to using temperature to drive the smoke here. We copy the scholar channel for this and rename it to temperature. 
and our interaction node is already set by copying it also here taking a better integrator just for quality reasons could do the same here for the smoke channel which i now rename to smoke just for clarity for now we don't have any temperature in there let's hide the smoke channel so we see what's inside the temperature channel and still there isn't anything so let's copy the emission settings here the container and call it temperature container and also here we call it temperature settings So in our temperature container, we change the target channel to temperature and temperature settings has already been placed here by Cinema 4D by copying it. Uh, so nothing else we need to do here, although of course we want temperatures and temperatures are in the range of Kelvin. So let's say we emit 700 Kelvin, which um, well, let's just shot it. so. Per frame, if we use shot, of course, we still need to assign the container here. And now we can see that we have some temperature in there. But one thing we still need to change, and when this is the range of our channel, we have a minimum value of zero Kelvin in this case for temperature and a maximum value. Let's just put it to 2000 Kelvin. All right, so now our temperature will also move according to the fluid motion predicted by the gaseous dynamics node and that is applied to the channel by the advection node. But still nothing happens differently than without the temperature channel because we still need to have a force that turns the temperature into a uprising force, if you want to put it like that. As you know, in reality, hot things tend to rise to the top and that's what we need here. And for this, we go into the gauge dynamics again for our grid forces and click on the candidate button to create a buoyancy force, which is doing exactly what I just explained. And double clicking on the buoyancy force will get us to its settings. And here we have the channel that we could assign, of course, the temperature channel, which we have and a smoke channel which we also have and that's about it so now we can set the amount of rising strength i just increase this here and now i can play the simulation as you can see as we have temperature the smoke is rising upwards controlled by the temperature so that's about it hope it was helpful check out our next tutorial about caching all this simulation data